Hello everyone, welcome back. This is Chris Petri. Thanks again for coming by. Thanks for all my new subscribers um, coming along for our journey here. We're doing watercolors um, and this is actually uh, ink and wash we're going to do today and um, we're going to do a um, dub over video so I'm actually going to just be doing some dub over uh, dub overs, uh, voiceovers of an original painting that I did uh, uh, maybe a year ago or so. Um, so I figured uh, the original video I made was uh, had music um, uh, accompanying the video so there wasn't any uh, uh, um, voice instruction or any kind of um, commentary that I did with it. So I figured now I can go back and um, pick a few choice videos that I uh, never did any voiceovers with and I can do a voiceover and kind of just explain a little more in detail what uh, I'm kind of uh, working on here when I when I create this painting and this is a watercolor cafe uh, in Paris France um, I took it from a photo I actually went on Google found a really nice beautiful cafe picture from France and um, printed it out on my printer and then I just set it up by my uh, table and I and I did uh, an ink, um, pen and ink first, and then a watercolor wash over the top. So we'll do it here now, and we'll kind of just kind of go through the interesting uh, steps of how we create something like this. So this is pretty much a real fun way to do watercolors. Um, it's also a great way to um, practice a little more of our drawing skills with this type of technique, because what we did first is we First, we did the pencil sketch, which you can see on the right-hand side on our watercolor paper. We have a watercolor paper, of course, on a board taped down with some uh, artist tape around the outside border. We uh, did a contour drawing uh, with pencil first on our pa watercolor paper. And then now we're going to go in and we're going to do um, black Sumi ink or uh, Speedball black ink, permanent ink, with a uh, Bill Buckman reed pen, which is a great uh, reed pen for doing uh, ink and washes. So here, um, again, we've we've skipped the steps. So we've already done our pencil drawing of the cafe from our photograph we, we took offline. And now we're going to go in and we're going to use our uh, our our ink pen, our read our re ink read pen here. And we're just going to trace over our pencil drawing. So that's very simple. So here we're kind of getting twice as much drawing time in when we're doing this type of a composition and painting, ink and wash, as, the, as we call it, ink and wash. Um, and it keeps us here on our toes with our, uh, our drawing skills. So here, since I am going over, and this is a really key point here uh, I'd like to make. So... And, and I, want, I want you to see if this makes sense. Um, if we already have a pencil drawing down, when we go over it a second time with our ink now, with our reed pen and our ink, uh, Sumi ink, black Sumi ink, it's permanent, so it dries and then we can paint over it and it won't smudge or smear. Um, we get to be a little more free-flowing with our drawing because we already have that pencil drawing underneath it to be as a guide for us. So now we can kind of get a little more free and flowing with our drawing. So this is why it's great doing that preliminary pencil sketch. Now you can see I'm really moving quite rapidly through this drawing with the um, ink. I have a small little ink, plastic ink cup there. It's almost like a cough syrup ink. Um, actually, I think it is a cough syrup uh, top to a, a cough syrup bottle. And um, it's just got the black Sumi ink in it and I'm using my Bill Buckman Zen reed pen. And you can see here, I'm just cruising right through because I have that pencil drawing down already. So now I can be more free flowing, fast, um, loose, no worries. I, I know essentially I'm just kind of tracing over what I've already done. So I took my time a little more um, on the pencil drawing when I did the contour drawing of the cafe scene and now I can go a little more rapidly and have a little more fun and, and be a little more loose as I'm doing my um, my ink uh, drawing over the top. So that's pretty much the uh, idea behind uh, ink and wash with a preliminary pencil sketch underneath. Uh, it allows us to um, go a little more quicker and be more confident with our ink and ink drawing and then and then we can have a ton of fun with our wash over the top of this because really the, 
the more exciting feature of this is the actual ink drawing. So the watercolor paint over the top is just really like, it's just as beautiful and interesting, but we're not being as accurate. We're not being as accurate with our watercolor washes over the top of this when we get to that point, because really the the striking feature of this painting is the, the actual ink ink drawing. So here I'm just penciling in again. I'm tracing over what I already drew, and sometimes I'll make a little variation here and there, and that's no big deal as you draw with your ink pen. You can make little changes if you think you need to, and it's never going to be uh, seen because we're going to also go over this with our watercolor. So you can you can um, deviate from your pencil drawing a little bit here and there if you like when you do this technique. All right, so here we're just getting down the basics of everything, drawing in all the, the canopy over the top of this nice little cafe scene here in Paris. Um, there's some nice beautiful brick walls here. We're going to do some brick uh, brick here and there just a little bit. We don't have to do every brick. We just do a few here and there to let the person that's going to view this painting that let them know that yes there's brick here and they see a few bricks here and there and then it automatically is um, if you just give an indication here of there uh, here and there of those those bricks um, that's good enough. A person looking at this will just automatically feel and think well yeah, it's just a that's some brick brick wall here and no need to uh, fill in every single brick and on the other side here we're just doing some more brick work over here this is uh, this is some trim around the door so that's a doorway and there's some brick on that doorway so I'm painting uh, drawing in the ink uh, bricks there And you'll see I take my time in certain locations. And then in other locations I go a little quicker. And that's just so that, again, if it's, if you have a few brick sections here and there with the brick lines, with the mortar joints and the brick, it looks good. It looks, looks real. And doing some more lines around the chairs and around the doorway here. And Something I did with this painting um, is I, when I did the watercolor paint over it, I didn't let the ink fully dry, which was my idea of just letting some of that ink um, kind of mix and mingle with the watercolor paper. But you can also, if you want, um, you can also let this fully dry, and then when you go over with your watercolor paints, it won't smudge or smear. So. That's another, you know, little kind of offshoot of, of things you can do with your, your ink and washes. You can let the ink completely dry, or you can let your ink um, be a little bit wet while you do your watercolor washes. Um, the only thing I find is can be a little troublesome is um, certain areas you might not want dark. So if there is a, a, some some dark ink spots on certain areas that you want to keep really light you have to be careful keep a nap uh, you know a paper towel or a tissue with you and you can blot out the black ink if you need to if you want to keep an area light instead of letting the ink flow in and make a darker area and I did I used a blow dryer here actually so I did blow dry a little bit of the ink um, drawing but not to the point where it was uh, completely completely dry so here we're just gonna um, do a little bit of uh, blow drying. Again, you can go, you can, at this point, you can take a break for half an hour to an hour, and at that point, the ink would probably be most, most would be 100% dry. And then now I already have some of my colors that I wanted to use. I looked at the photograph and figured out what colors I was going to use, and I just put some out on my palette before I started. And, um, here we're just going in and I'm splashing in the colors and having a fun time. And again, the, the idea here is that ink is so beautiful, the ink drawing is so beautiful that, you know, you, we don't have to worry too much about our washes. Like the washes don't have to be as accurate. So most times when we do watercolor painting, you'll notice we, we're more careful with our watercolor paint application. But here we're having more fun. The ink is the star of the show. 
the ink drawing and then now we're just having some fun and splashing in some colors over the top. Does that make sense? Since we have that beautiful ink drawing with all those really interesting details, we can be a little bit less, um, or we could be a little more carefree with our watercolor application here. So our paints can go on a little more carefree. We're not uh, having to be too accurate because it's more of just like a, an accompaniment to the to the drawing, really. It's nice, beautiful reds and oranges. The brick, um, brick colors, and there's some uh, painted red trim over the top of that canopy. And I'm doing some splashing technique, a lot of splashing technique in this. Again, that adds another dimension to excitement and uh, interesting feel for the painting. And this uh, awning here is a green color, so we're putting in some green paint. And again, if you um, need colors, you, uh, you can go to Chris Petri, My Palette, or just type in My Palette Chris Petri, and you'll see my palette. I have all the colors. I go over them by name. Um, and also, too, you can always email me, um, and I can send you um, a printed out version of My Palette with all the colors and the names and, and so forth. And so here we're going into our blue colors, the cool blues of the um, glass of these windows. That's, like, that's the cafe inside. And here again, I'm using that dark black ink to um, kind of cover a lot of ground with the shadows. So, um, and it looks cool. And in, the, and, and in the photograph, it was very dark in these areas uh, of the uh, windows. So I'm sort of keeping an eye on my photograph as I'm painting this to try to stick to the tonal values of the picture, the actual photograph that I'm working from. So I'm trying to stay as true as I can to the actual picture, the photograph. And then there's some plants here. So I'm working on getting some green splashes of uh, color for the tree that's sitting here near the doorway. So that's the doorway there where that little tree is. And then there's the window by the table. And now I'm working on some more brickwork here. And some more reds, some nice reds and oranges. And then here on the foreground where the uh, doorway is, I, I just put a little bit of uh, orangey yellow colors to, for the color of warm concrete and uh, I might zoom forward just a touch here and again more more lots of good color here greens reds making it exciting and I might have added a little more exciting colors than what I saw in the photograph here and there so that's another thing as an artist. Um, uh, as an artist, you have the ability to change colors if you want a little bit, add some more uh, interesting colors that you feel you like or you enjoy more. So it's in a sense you can you can change colors as you go if you want. And I'm just painting the. Uh, the uh, placard board that sits out front of the cafe with the um, specials on it and so forth and do some more uh, plants there. There's a small potted plant next to that uh, placard so we're going to do that. And then we're I added a nice uh, green strip here along the side that was a building that was next to the cafe and that was a green uh, painted uh, section of the building, so I, I added that green. That's some chromium of oxide and some um, olive green. Again, I'm using quite a bit of uh, mineral violet purple, the purple color for the shadows. All right, so hope we had fun. Have fun with your painting. Enjoy, and we'll see you on the next video. Um, again, this is an ink and wash. Hope you enjoyed it, and uh, give it a try. It's a lot of fun. Bye-bye.